Amen. Let's all stand and worship today.
going to stop the plans he's made and that includes for this church we want you to be a part of that if you're visiting today for the first time please fill out a guest card on the back of the chair and turn it in at guest services and we'll send a chick-fil-a gift card home with you today we indeed welcome you here to kingdom life and invite you to be a part of it it's back to church sunday september 15th nationwide we're calling it together 
for Kingdom Life. It's a traditional thing after the summer slump, but we didn't do too bad here during that slump. We, we had a good time, and we want you to come back together for a great time as we celebrate getting back to church on a regular basis after the summer. So be with us September 15th for something special. Uh, we do uh, still have life group signups, right, outside. So that's at uh, guest services. You, you can be a part of that. Uh, if uh, you are an usher or greeter, September 15th, please be here at 5.30 for a meeting, a uh, get-together, a little uh, uh, pep talk and rally. What's that? <laughs> well, I go to work at 6, so this is the only way I could be here in the morning. No, it's 5.30 p.m., September 15th, usher-greeter meeting. Please be here. <laughs> ladies, the limitless ladies' luncheon. Is that all you can eat? Is that what that means? No, there's more to it than that. September 21st, still looking for sign-ups for that. We have room, but it's a limited seating, and that's at 11 a.m. here at the church. As you can see, 15 for 1. What a deal, 2 for 20. Bring a friend. That will be a, a great time for the ladies. Our mission is inspiring love, life, and relationships. Our vision, we exist to impact our culture with the love of God through real relationships. As our ushers come, we want to uh, collect enough, go back to that slide, we want to be able to raise enough money to buy a tea for culture. Uh, so <laughs> if you'd help us out with that this morning. We're, we're almost there. A few weeks ago we just had all vows up here, but thank you, thank you for your generosity. We so appreciate what you have done. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we indeed can have a good time in the house of the Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for what we're about to collect today, this opportunity. We thank you for the opportunity to worship you with our tithes and offerings. Now bless this money and the hands that use it. Multiply it for your purposes. In the name of Jesus, amen. If you'll stand back with us. I don't know who chose these songs. We started out today with, uh, the, again, the wind is raging. And this song is... Wave after wave crashes over me. I can tell you who planned these songs. These songs were on the list way before Dorian, before any hurricane threat. God planned these songs. He put these on our playlist this morning. John chapter 7, verse 38 says, For those who believe in me, rivers of living water will come from within me. Those waters are stronger than any hurricane. Do you believe that this morning? So let's call on him and count on the promises he's made to us as those waves. Let, let our waves crash over what's against us. We know that there's many going through storms already in their own lives, but he's promised to take care of them. Sing with us. storms <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna overcome this little one right here aren't we all right
done for you, for the healings that's taken place in your lives, financial freedom that you've been given. Please hear with us today.
Soak it in. Soak in that presence that's here. Soak it in because he's here. If you're not sure what you're feeling, just say, Jesus, show me. Show me what I need to do. Because he's here. That presence, that sweet spirit that you're feeling right now. message 
that I have been studying for for a week. I, already, I even gave John some of the PowerPoint pieces, and he made a title slide and all that. <clears throat> and um, it changed. And uh, I was like, God, it's Friday. You're going to change it now? And so I kind of started moving towards another direction. And, I, and at all day Saturday, I couldn't even study because um, I, just, I just didn't feel right about it. And I was like, oh, I hate this. When I, and when I get that way where I just can't study, I know there's God trying to do something. And so uh, Saturday night, or Saturday afternoon late, God, God gave me this message here. I said, this is the one you need to do. And I was like, okay, Wow. And so uh, then we started singing today these songs. All of them talk about plans and, and, and you know, and you're, you're, you're okay. And it didn't turn out the way you thought it was going to. But you know what? God's always in, in the end, always going to be there. And I'm not enough unless you come. And, and it's all talking about plans and what we think. And then we think we're in a place that we shouldn't be. Make me brave during this storm and all that. And so it's, it's pretty amazing, you know. And, and, and because that's, that's what I'm going to talk about today is the title of my message is there is a plan there you go there is a plan so now I really feel good about this because I was like God you know because I you know last week we had a lot going on we had a longer service the last couple of weeks and this week at the end because because of the time constraint here of when I received this is is that it's not as long but it's gonna be okay because I believe that that God is orchestrating everything and always does and uh Sometimes when, when you know you feel the heaviness of the responsibility of giving the right word, you, you kind of get scared and kind of intimidated because like, I want to give out. I don't want to just come up here and run my mouth. I don't want to just come up here. I want to come, you know, because I wanted to talk about some stuff and I, want, you know, I was going to kind of flow on forgiving others, forgiving yourself, not being offended. Then I, wanna talk, I was going to talk about the words that we talk, talk about tongue twister, talk about the words that we say and how we shape words and how it affects our life by our speech. But then God, God changed it to something else. And today we're going to talk about there is a plan. There is a plan. I, I, I always try to have a plan and I always try to have a backup plan. And when hurricanes like this come, you know, I don't like the devastation. I don't like the, 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 all the bad things that come along with it. But the part I do like is, is kind of being together with family. And I love kind of being around and being in the dark and, and you know, and playing board games and having fun like that. That kind of, st that, that part is, is exciting, you know. And, and, and meeting neighbors because you don't never meet your neighbors till you're in a storm. You know, you, you walk next, y'all do okay, everything okay, how y'all doing? And you're like, hey, what's your name? You know, and so, so we, we do that, but, but it happens. And we may have one, we may not. We're just going to trust God. Um, in the middle of the storm last time, we, we, we felt forsaken, didn't we? But, but God used it and used it to take Wilmington and bring us all together. For the first time in I don't know how many years, if ever, um, the, uh, the, uh, there was like 40 pastors and women in the same room at the same time. And, they were, and it was amazing that we all got together and we talked and said, what can we do to help this and change this? There's still to this very day, there, there's, there, there's, there's, there's a remnant um, that, that still works on how to handle the situation and is still working on Florence, helping people with Florence. And so, so the thing is, is that there, there's always a plan. And, we, and, and now we all have a plan, right? Wilmington has a plan for what's about to happen if it happens. You know, um, um, but because we've been, we've been through it. Once you've been through something, you kind of have a better plan, don't you? You know, but the problem is, is when you're in, in, in the middle of it, what, what do we always want? We always want a promise, right? We always want a word, something that, that, that's going to make us feel better, something, something that's going to help us. And I'm sure you've been like that too, and, and darkness has been creeping in on you. And maybe today, I, well, I know for a fact, because of what's happening here, what I'm talking about, there's people in this very room that darkness is surrounding you. And you're looking for a word. You're looking for help. You're looking for Jesus. You're looking for a promise of the Bible somewhere, somehow, to help you. And I want to read Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. It's, it's like an old shoe. It's one of those great, it's one of the greatest promises. One of the greatest promises in the Bible that people go to, it's their go-to, right? The go-to, 2911. Okay, well, what does it say? For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not disaster to give you a hope and a future. Jeremiah is a, is a pretty uh, de depressing. If, if you got depression going on, don't read Jeremiah. <laughs> if, you, if you are, it's not a book that I'm going to ask a new Christian, why don't you start in Jeremiah? <laughs> you know, 
You know, a lot of y'all know Dr. Tony Evans, right? He's, he's, a great, he's a great speaker. He says, Jeremiah 29 11 um, is a, a well-lit verse in a very dark chapter in a very dark book. It's just, it's just a, so, but, well, what you, well, but that's where we get Jeremiah 29 and 11. Okay, well, I bet you anything if I ask every one of you in this room, I may have two or three that knew what Jeremiah 29 and 10 says. You know, we, sometimes we get stuff and we, we don't look at, at all the context of what it says. You ain't got to go to the beginning of that chapter or the beginning of the book. Let's just go back one verse. This is what the Lord says. You will be in Babylon for, third, for 70 years, and then I will come and do for you all the good things that I have promised and will bring you home again, for I know the plans I have for you. So we look at that as just this just wonderful promise and everything's happy. Look, the Israelites went around 40 years in the wilderness. This time they're they out here in Babylon, which is present-day Iraq, for, for 70 years. And he says, and I ain't coming back until the 70 years is over. God had plans for them. He had plans for prosperity for them. But they, but they were worshiping other idols and doing other things. You know, they had, you know they, had, they had to go through 70 years of poverty before the prosperity came. They had to go through 70 years of pain and danger before um, the plans of freedom came. They had to go through 70, 70 years of, of <clears throat> hopeless circumstances for the hope to come of the future. <clears throat> Excuse me. Maybe you feel today like you're, you know what? Hey, I love that Jeremiah 29 and 11, and I, I'm holding on to that because today I feel like I'm in Jeremiah 29 and 10. I promise you, just because, I, just the way everything's going, I feel so good about this now because I just know that's what's happening in here. I know there's people in right here that you feel like, man, I just feel like I'm in bondage. I feel like I'm in chains. I feel, I feel like there's all, all kind of stuff going on in my life, and I got 70 years, you know. Thank God that, that we don't have to go through 70 years of stuff because poor kids, if you were 12 years old, you were 82 years old before the promise came. You know, most people died in that situation. They didn't even get, to, they didn't even get to, 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 to the, the plan. But today, because, of, because Christ was on the cross, we don't have to endure that kind of thing. But we do have to go through situations in our life that are dark and dreary. You know, and, and the, the, the thing is, 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 is we look, you know, whenever that comes, we, we look at all the negative circumstances around us. We look at the chronic mistakes we made. We look at the sin in our lives and the different things that are happening. So I'm going to tell you today about four things and we'll be done. I'll give you four lessons we're going to learn from this. Number one, God is more concerned that you know the planner than the plan. Okay? Because we want the plan. Give me the plan. People walk around. Give me a word. People, people walk around to prophetic conferences just so they can get a word from God. And there, there's, there's thousands of words right here for them that if they just read the Bible rather than looking for a man to give them the word they're looking for, They'll find there's nothing wrong with somebody giving you a word. We, 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 we're, we're prophetic church. You know Pastor Tammy and Pastor Cindy, man, they're, they're very prophetic, and they flow in that, and then God does that sometimes. But <clears throat> God doesn't want us to keep looking for the plan. What, what's my way out, God? We're, we're looking for the, the escape route. We're looking for the light at the end of the tunnel. You know, God's like, just, just seek me, and I'll, and I'll take care of everything else. So Jeremiah 29 and 10, okay, 70 years, Jeremiah 29 and 11, you got uh, the plan I have for you. Jeremiah 29 and 12 tells us, know the planner. It says, in those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you'll find me. I will be found by you. I will be found for you if you're looking for me wholeheartedly, says the Lord. I will end your captivity and restore your fortunes. I will gather you out of the nations where I sent you and will bring you home again to our land. So God's the whole book. He's, the things are happening. He's like, but I got a plan, but I got a plan, but you're going to have to seek me to get out of the situation and find what the plan is. God wants us to know the planner. He don't want us to compromise. He don't want us to, to, to try to figure it out and try to, to, to run through the situation. He wants us to take our time and say, God, I'm going to methodically stay right here. I'm going to listen to you. <clears throat> I'm going to learn from my situations. And I'm going to... <coughs> <coughs> Jesus, sorry about that. <clears throat> Thus saith the word of God. <laughs> Did y'all hear them angels up in the house today? Dear God. 
That was a high pitch right there, wasn't it? But he's more concerned that you know who he is than what he could do for you. But see, we get to the place as we want God when, whenever, whenever we need something. We don't want to get to know God in the good times. Most people get to know God good in the bad times. They're, we're selfish. Really, I, yeah, I know who you are, but I'm going to come to the candy store when, it's, when, I, when I need some candy, you know. And so, but the, here's the problem. They were in captivity because they were in rebellion against God, and they had disobedience, and they were serving all kind of, all kind of idols and stuff. They didn't have a need for God. They, had, they were just doing their own thing, and they, were depend, they weren't dependent on him. They were worshiping idols and, 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 and of the heart and of, of, of actual statue. But it, that sounds kind of like today, right? In today's society, we have a lot of people worship a lot of idols, not just cults and stuff like that, but we also have people that are worshiping things, right? Material things, trying to get them places. What God is trying to do, what he, what he was trying to do with the Israelites, he, he tries to do for us, but on a smaller scale. He don't want us to go through 70 years of, of, of captivity, but he has times in our life, seasons. What does Ecclesiastes say? There's a season and a time for everything. So we will go through seasons of, of, of suffering so God can allow the plans to take place. This, this is to break our independence to the point where, where we become desperate enough to give full attention to him and get a response from him. <clears throat> Here's a problem. We, we, we are not desperate enough for God. The only time we get desperate for God is whenever we go through hardships. I, God does not want us to be desperate for him just in hardships. God wants us to love him so much that we're desperate for him in a time of joy. If you really want to have a good relationship with God and you really want to feel the presence of God in your life, go after God when everything's good. But the problem is we get fat and fancy on a, on a mountaintop and we're having a good Holy Ghost experience and we don't need God so much right now. I don't need to seek you, God, because I've already got you. And see, then we're in trouble because we feel like we've already attained it. We've already got Holy Spirit. We've already, we, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling great. I'm, I'm, I'm ministering. I'm, I'm doing things. I'm, 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 I'm feeling the Holy Spirit, and I'm, I'm, I'm reaching people. And I'm talking to people, and, and I'm, I'm witnessing, and I'm doing all the right things, and I'm feeling good, and the enemy's scared of me right now. You know, and we get to the place where we just kind of push God aside and says, you know, I don't need you right this minute. But God's like, no, you need me every minute, every hour, of every second of every day. So why do you think that we, when we're on mountaintops, how do you think we end up in a valley? Right? Because we get so fat and fancy up on the mountaintop, all of a sudden we take our eyes off God and we quit seeking God. If we sought God more on the mountaintop, the mountaintop would, would last a little longer. But it doesn't last as long because we quit seeking God. We get up there and things happen to us and things hit us and we think, no, God, I don't, this is a situation, but I'm on a mountaintop right now. I'm strong enough and powerful enough to handle this and it's going to be okay. So I don't really need your help right now because I'm feeling kind of feeling kind of spiritual. Oh, oh, excuse me. He says, okay, you go ahead and do your thing, God says, you know. But he says in verse 14, if you look for me wholeheartedly, you'll find me. He wants us to go wholeheartedly after him. He wants us to seek him with all our might, soul, and strength. He wants us to go out during these times when we have these little ca captivity moments, if you want to look at them like that, for this scripture. He wants us to quit trying to figure out a plan, quit trying to find, find our way out of this. Say, God, just help me. Give me strength. I, I, that hope in there, hope is not for now. God don't give you hope for now. Hope is for the future. He gives you the hope. He gives you hope now to hope for the future. Hope is a future thing. Hope is not a now thing. It's for you to hang on and cling to now, knowing that the hope, the future, is going to happen. Number two, your holiness is more important than your happiness. When I was younger and, and um, <clears throat> I would do stuff wrong and I would, I would get spankings and, and stuff like that, and my parents didn't seem to be concerned that it hurt me, and I was not happy. <laughs> because they were more concerned about my attitude than my happiness. They were more concerned that I learned something rather than that I was happy at that point in time. 
They knew that that moment of unhappiness was going to teach me something so I would be happy. And I wouldn't make that same mistake again that would bring me back into captivity <laughs> into my bedroom <laughs> Lock, on lockdown. And so that's what God does. God is, God know, he's concerned about your happiness, but he's more concerned about your holiness. He's more concerned about your walk with him, your attitude, your character, your integrity, your honor. He's more concerned about that. And, and, and if, if he has to let, allow you to go through something to get you to a place where you can be more happy with yourself, with character, integrity, and honor, and, and faith, and trust, then he's going to do that. And he's not, so, he's not so worried that you're not happy right now. <clears throat> Because he knows that you will be happy. And so it, it bothers us sometimes when we get in that situation. Just because he will comfort you does not mean he wants you to be comfortable. Yeah, I'm going to be a comfort. But God allows some, some stuff to happen sometimes for us to be uncomfortable. So we will become dependent on him. And he is yearning for us to become desperate for him. To say, God, I'm not enough unless you come. But we get to the place where, we, where we're like, oh, I'm enough right now, God. I'm enough. You don't need to come right now. Wayne Cordero says, God's ways are certainly not our ways. All too often before the truth sets you free, it will make you miserable. He's concerned, God's concerned about making us whole and complete. He's concerned about make, perfecting our faith. He's concerned about eternity, not just the temporary situation. We want to be happy in this temporary situation. And God's like, no, I want to make you, a ha I want to make you happy forever. So you may be uncomfortable right now in this situation, but I, in the long run, I'm going to make you okay. I have a plan, but right now you got to go through. Why am I going through? God, we don't, why? God, why am I dealing with this right now? This don't make sense. I'm, I'm trying my best. I'm doing my best. I'm doing what I can. I've served you. I've honored you. I love you. I'm doing what I go to church. I do what I can, God. Why am, we, we can't figure things out. If we could figure things out, we'd be God. So just submit to the process. Focus on the planner and know that the planner may allow pain to come for his purpose to take place. And the whole, the whole reason for all of it is because of the fact that the planner has a plan and the plan brings forth his purpose and his purpose brings his destiny, your destiny. And you got to remember, when you have pain, pain is temporary. It's not always going to be this way. When we're in the middle of it, we feel like, oh, God, this is going to kill me. This is going to last forever. It hurts. It's bad. It's frustrating. It makes you mad. But God's like, hey, hey, tr just trust. I got a plan. Your plan's coming. Prosperity's coming. The, the blessing's coming. The, the hope and the future's coming. But right now, you gotta get you gotta get desperate for me. Get desperate for me. And it's a shame that sometimes God's gotta allow things to happen for us to be desperate. It's a shame that we have to go through these times to really turn to God and say, God, you're my everything. Nothing I'll put before you. But we go through these times and when we kind of we kind of just like I got this I, I can figure this out. Number three, God's plan doesn't work on our timetable. We talked about that a lot last week. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. It, it, and, and it's an incredible promise that we should cling to. It's a promise that that's true. That we got to understand that completion does not always come now. It does not come always when we want it. What's that song? He may not come when you want him, but he'll always be right on time. So we got to know that completion will come this, what does the scripture say? Weep and endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning, right? And we got to know the sun has to come up. And you may not even see the sun. Because you know what? Have you ever been in an airplane and it was raining, raining down here and you get in an airplane and you go above the clouds and it's just sunshiny day? Right? So the sun's always shining. You just may not see it. But the sun always comes up. And eventually the, 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 the sun burns through them clouds. We want shortcuts. And there was a guy in, in Jeremiah 28. Let's back up one. In Jeremiah 28. 
This was a, a guy who, who was a self-proclaimed prophet. And he, pray, he, pray, he got to the people. Now, God already said 70 years, right? So here's what happened. He prophesied that the people would be out of bondage within two years. So thus saith the word of God. And two months later, he died. And then that's where Jeremiah came, and, and thus the Lord told through Jeremiah, said, listen, there's going to be false prophets crying to come and tell you that this is going to be over, and it's not. Seventy years is what you're going to get. That's your time. So quick, don't look for shortcuts and try to run around and look for someone to tell you that, oh, this is about over. Seek God. Get desperate for God and allow God to open that door for you. We expect, we expect the utterance of, of, this, of this verse 29 and 11 to come in the middle of chaos. V Jeremiah 29 and 11 is only, as I said a while ago, something to hold on to during, Jer to Jer during Jeremiah 29 and 10. It's not the it's not the answer. It's not going to. I'm not going to anoint myself with 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 with, a, with eleven, and all of a sudden ten is going to disappear. You've got to go through the process, and it's just hey, there's something better coming. It's coming. It's coming. We've been through it for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I'm holding on to that. I have a, I have one in my car, and I have one in my office. It's just I got them in Israel, and it's just a little prayer cross. And when I go through a real hard time, I'll just walk around with it, and I'll just play with it. I'll just hold it in my hand and I'll just run it back and forth and wear it out. But it just, it just keeps my mind focused of the hope of the cross that God's near me, that he, he's, he, you're not alone, Doug. He'll never leave you, don't forsake you. So when I'm holding on that cross, it reminds me that God is near. He's not on the cross no more, but he's near. And that cross just is a symbol. You know, you know the old song, and I'll cling to the old rugged cross. I mean, it changes someday for a crown. Okay. Anyway. Um, but in the midst of these circumstances, we, we want to scream to 29 and 11 in verse 10. And God's like, that's just not how I work. It reminds us that, re but what it should remind us that is God is always with us and he never forsakes us. We're still his people and we, and we have to wait to see his plans come to fruition. Number four and the last one. As long as you're breathing, as long as you are breathing, there's always hope. There's always hope. Hope is a joyful expectation about the future. It's not one of present circumstances. It's expectation that tomorrow will be better than today, that the future will be better than the past, that where I'm going is better than when I've come. Joy is, is that, that the best is yet to come. Isaiah, Isaiah says, 49 and 11, 49 and 11. I didn't really look at this up before I came up here. But it says, um, it says, those who wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. They shall mount upon wings as, as eagles. They shall run and not be weary and walk and not faint. That scripture, wait, I mean, that, that, that word wait there, we think like it's dun, 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 dun. That's not what it's, that, 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 that word wait um, in the Greek, it, talk, it means expectant. It means expectant. It means that you, that you are expecting, you're waiting like, okay, okay, are you, what's going to happen? What are you going to do? Okay, also it means to be intertwined. So, so you, as you wait, you are desperate for God. You are intertwining yourself with God. You are, you are communing with him and, and, and mixing yourself with him and ex wait, expectantly waiting for the answer, for the, the day to come. So that's what Isaiah 40, 31. Yes, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> that's what it is. But regardless of your present situation, there is a hope and a plan. There's a hope and a plan. And God will use the, the, these very things that you're going through to build faith for the future. And also what he'll do is, is he will use these very things that you're going through to help somebody else. How many people have ever been through something and someone's going through a hard time and you were able to minister to them and say, hey, I know what you're talking about. Is, man, I can appreciate so much when I'm going through something for another pastor to come talk to me and say, hey, man, I know what, you, I know what you're going through. I've been there. What I don't want to hear is, hey, I know, what, I know what you're going through. Have you ever been through that? No, I don't have I know I haven't. I don't want to hear it. For, don't, don't come to me if you ain't been through it. Don't help me with my issue when you ain't been through it. But if you've been through it, then all of a sudden, hey, I can sympathize. Oh, isn't there something in the Bible about that, guys? 
God says, I've already been through it all. I already know it. I've been through everything. I've been, I've been, I've been, been, been on every situation that you go through. I've, I've already been through it. That's why we can go to him. Because there's not a situation that we're going to go through that he is not there for us. And he wants to be there for you today. I know you've gone through some bad times. And we just got to trust God and say, God, why? Why is this? I'm, I'm almost at the place where, where I just, when bad things happen, I'm like, okay, God, <laughs> all right. Because when I quit fighting the process, the plan comes a lot faster. And when I realize that man makes his, his thoughts, man makes his plans, but God's plan will prevail. When I, when I really understand that, then when things don't go my way, I got to quit bucking them. And say what? Wait a second. Oh, oh, you have a plan. And I'm going through this bad time, and then I and then I stop God from I, I stop God from working his plan. Because I'm so much ticked off about the plan, about what's happening over here. I got my plans, God. And God's like, I'm trying to work another plan. You said I surrender all. You said that, that I trust you, God. You said that, that I'm your king, I am your Lord, I am your Savior. Now let me do what I'm supposed to do and get your hands out of the fruit basket. Let me do it. But God, I had a plan. <sighs> okay, here we go again. I can just see God. I know with me, I just see God when I'm arguing. He's just, he's just, he's just like, okay, you're done. I mean, I feel like God tells me that all the time. You're done. really how old are you now and you still ain't figured this out and you get a pastor I just gotta relax and say God this okay work your plan God I trust you this is uncomfortable to me I don't like it I don't want it but it's a plan that you have so now show me how awesome of a God you are and work as and, 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 and show me that promise, God, where you said that you'll work all things out for the good of those who love you and call according to your purpose. So you know what, God? Instead of worrying about it and fighting the plan, I'm just going to ask you to pr produce your promise. Just do what you said you're going to do. And I'm going to sit here, and I'm going to trust you, and I'm going to wait expectantly, and I'm going to be desperate for you in good times and in bad times, and I'm going to just go forward, and I just know that everything's going to be okay. Praise God. Would you bow your head and close your eyes, please? Who would be here today and say, Pastor Doug, I'm not a Christian. I don't know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, but I want to receive Christ. I want to be saved. If that's you on Facebook, you can certainly message us or, or, or type it in there and we'll, we'll, we'll talk to you there. But if you're in this room, would you raise your hand if you want to just receive Christ? You want to just make Christ your Savior. Well, who would say, Pastor Doug, I, I'm, uh, I'm kind of in Jeremiah 29 and 10. I'm a Christian and I love God and I serve God, but I'm in a, I'm in a captivity area. I'm in a situation right now and I just feel like uh, I'm in Jeremiah 29 and 10 and I need Jeremiah 29 and 11 to come. Amen. If that's you, would you just raise your hand? Amen. Hands are going up before I even ask. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to have a general prayer for you right now and then I'm going to ask those of you that really want to to come up here and let us agree with you. Let us pray with you and let us stand in Jeremiah 29 and 10 with you until Jeremiah 29 and 11 comes. That's what I want, white, that's what, that's what I want um, kingdom life to be. I want kingdom life to be a church that we stand in Jeremiah 29 and 10 with people until Jeremiah 29 and 11 shows up. That's what I want us to be. Inspiring love, life, and relationships through the good and the bad. Dear Heavenly Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Father, that those that are in this room, that are in the 2910 situation, God, that you give them, Lord, it may look dark, but Lord, you be the light as they search for you, as they become desperate for you. 
God, can you be the light for them? God, can you let kingdom life be a light for them? So they can find their way out of the darkness. Let us become desperate for you, Lord. Father, help us to wait till 2911 comes. And Satan, what you meant for destruction, God's going to turn around for the good. What you meant for evil, God is going to make for joy. You're a liar, Satan. We rebuke you right now in the name of Jesus. And all that you try to distract us and all that you try to bring to destroy us and, and, and get our mind off other, on, on things of God and get in our mind different ways, we will prevail. We will come forward. Thank you, Father, for it. In Jesus' name, bless every person in here, God. In Jesus' name. If you're here today and you're like, man, I, I'm, in, I'm in 2910 and I need some help. I want, to, I want prayer. I need prayer. I need somebody to stand with me during this storm. This ain't a, this, this, and, and, and in your mind, you already got a Cat 5 going on in your life. Maybe it's Cat 4, 3, 2. Maybe it's just a hurricane. Maybe, maybe you just got a tropical storm, but you're like, hey, 29 and, 20, 29 and 10 is, 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 is anywhere from a, a, a tropical storm to Cat 5. If that's you, would you come down here and let us pray with you? Don't miss out on what God has for you. Don't, don't allow the enemy to steal your blessing. Would you come down here and let us pray? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If I can get some brothers and sisters to come behind them and stand. In love and solidarity. And there's more. I feel like there's, there's definitely a lot more. So you're welcome to come be here. We're going to pray and we're going to believe. In the name of Jesus.